Hi everyone, my name's Sophie and uh, this is going to be the first time I podcast about just yarn. Uh, those of you who've been with me for a while will know that I did plan stuff and stationary stuff and I'm still totally obsessed with that stuff, don't you worry, um, and those may come back. But at the moment my current obsession, current, my obsession, let's just skip the word current, is this stuff. And this is totally not showing up how beautiful it is. Anyway, um, you can find me mostly on Instagram. Uh, I have two accounts on Instagram, uh, Sophie Swan, Sophie X-U-A-N, I'll put it on the screen somewhere, uh, which is my personal account, um, but I mostly post about yarn and some of my small person. Um, and then I also have a very small business called A Spring Snowflake. Again, I'll put it on here, uh, which you can find me on Instagram. I've also got a Facebook uh, page for that, that business, um, where I basically make things, usually at Christmas, to sell. Um, but I do take commissions and all sorts of stuff. Today I'm going to talk about, and the podcast will be named this, How I'm a Serial Starter. One of the things that I've done recently is I've, uh, this is my, my tiny little box room in my house, um, which we've called my craft room slash office, um, because I can't just have a craft room, it has to actually have a, like, businessy type sound. It's also got to be a bedroom, so there is a futon in here, it's the tiniest thing in the world. But yeah, I've just done a bit of a, a sort out of my craft room, and I have 18 works in progress. Yeah. So, today's podcast will not include any finished objects because it's the first one and usually you show people things as they're on the way and then you show them they're finished, so yeah, there's not going to be any finished objects. There's going to be some purchases because I went to Unravel a couple of weeks ago and it was awesome. Um, and then I'm going to show you all 18 whips. Mostly I'm thinking about using this channel as a bit of accountability to myself. So at least once a month, if not more, I'm going to film a video and I'm going to show you that list going down. So if we start off with all 18, then maybe in a month's time, no, I know in a month's time there will be at least one that's gone. Now, should we show, should I show you the purchases first? And you can see the shiny things first. And then if you want to stay and listen to my Whipholics Anonymous, um, you can. So I went to, and I saved the thing, although it's got a stain on it, I went to Unravel, which is at Farnham Maltings um, on the, I went on the Sunday on the 18th of February. Now the reason I went on the Sunday um, is because Faye from the Crochet Circle, hi Faye, I'm waving. Uh, <laughs> Faye always waves. Her podcast is audio and also video. Um, but she waves anyway, even though th th there's people who only listen. Anyway, she was coming all the way down from Cheshire uh, for the Sunday and I went, well, I want to go meet Faye. So I went on the Sunday. Um, there were other lovely people who were there as well. Um, Chrissy Crafts, Sweet Shana, Anna Boo's House, <sighs> Sandra from Cherry Heart, uh, Flick and Helen. I think I've got everyone. Yeah. Um, so I met loads of people. I met people I met at, um, at Yarndale last year as well, um, I saw them again, so that's quite nice, and it was nice to kind of have a chat um, and have a cup of tea and a bacon roll uh, with some lovely people that I know from Instagram. Uh, but I also bought stuff, obviously. Now, one of the reasons I went to Unravel is because I'm currently, part or rather I have partaken in Fibershare, this current round of Fibershare. If you don't know what Fibershare is, I'll put the link down below and you'll see it's awesome. It's a way of making lovely fibery friends online, but also sending them some really nice stuff. And one of the reasons I wanted to go to Unravel was to buy some um, things to put in my Fibershare package for my partner. But I also bought stuff for myself. So I'm gonna show you the stuff for myself. Now the first place I went to, but the, not the first place I bought from, was Rivernitz. So uh, I've got her card. And that's, oh, let's see if it's gonna work. That's their details. Now, Becky, I think I'm Becky, she's lovely, she's awesome. They live on a canal boat and they dye yarn on their canal boat and their yarn is awesome. So the things I bought, I wanted to buy sock yarn. Um, so I chose 
these two beautiful skeins, which totally, uh, they're all right. They're a little bit faded and washed out. But so these are both 100% um, BFL four ply. This is the mermaid colorway. And then this is the kingfisher colorway. And I picked these out and I went, right, I wanna make socks out of them, Becky. Which contrasting minis, because they have a wall of rainbow minis, do you think will go with them? Um, so she, I went, right, mermaid. And she went, anything purple. So I went with this. How beautiful. It's not, it's, oh, it's showing a bit more blue than it actually is. But it's a beautiful purple. Let's get your fingers out of the way, shall we, Sophie? There we go. And then I went, what about this one? Now, green, blue, no, 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 no. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that go so beautifully together? So those will be the contrasting heels, toes and cuffs. Now I've never made socks before, but I'm determined this year is the year of the sock. I'm going to learn, I'm learning how to knit very slowly. I mostly crochet, but I'm going to at least have one pair of crochet and one pair of knitted socks by the end of 2018. So, beautifulness. They're lovely as well. Right. Acquisition one. Acquisition two was at a place where I bought some beautiful yarn um, at Yarndale and I went and I went back to see her. Um, and this is from Rosie's Moments. So this is her little tag. Let's see if that's actually going to show up. There we go. And this is a four ply again. It doesn't really look at it because it, it's actually quite, it feels quite thick and it's watching. This is a four ply here we go. Uh, Merino, Superwash Merino and Donegal Nep, uh, 8515, and it's called Stormy Sky. How beautiful is that? No idea what I'm going to make with it, but I had to buy it. Rosie's Moments, she just wrote Rosemary, who owns it, and also she does little lavender sashes as well. Um, she's such a lovely lady, and I had a really lovely chat, chat with her other half, with her, I think, husband, um, at Yarndale, and I didn't get a chance to speak to her, but I got to speak to her um, at, at Unravel. And she's such, a, she's such a warm woman, and you just find yourself chatting for like 20 minutes, um, and yeah. I, you can kind of spot a theme, can't you, with the colour? palette that I'm going with. Okay, and then I saw on Chris, yes, Chrissy Crafts, uh, Chrissy's Instagram post um, about a hand-dyed natural dye um, stall called Trava and Wool. So I went over to see her because I thought actually that's going to be right up my fiber share partner street. And then I saw this. Now, this is totally washed out. This is more of a it looks almost cream on camera, but it's really not. It's it's more of a kind of very light. It's more yellowy. It's more yellowy. Now this is Superwash Me at Merino. It's single sock, um, 366 meters to 100 grams. Um, and it is dyed with oak. So oak leaves, and I think oak bark is what she said. But there's, um, some of you may know my maiden name was Oakland. So anything that has oak in it, acorns, oak leaves, totally all over it. So that was for me. Um, oh, I forgot the other thing I got from Rosie's Moments. She had a few, sorry, they're crinkling. Um, she had a few minis that were in bags. So this is, <laughs> look at this, 50 gram of, I think just offcuts of um, blues and purples. Uh, which are, I think, seven, ooh, let's not get the camera. Uh, yeah, 75 merino, 25% nylon, approximately 200 meters, and they were reduced, so uh, that's another Rosie's Moments beautifulness, and I'm collecting minis, because that's what we do. And that was the other thing. So then I went to, now I can't remember her name, Eliza, I'm looking in my book, because I circled the, Eliza Conway, I went to her stall. Now, if anyone's ever been to one of these yarn festivals and seen Eliza, her stall is basically like, it's like kind of part boot fair, part antique shop of, of stuff you can use um, for Instagram fodder. Um, so they had, she had like rusty scissors and cake tins that were a, a funny shape. And But what Eliza's known for is these random balls of, itchy yarn. They were dubbed hashtag itchy balls. So I got some, obviously. Now, 
These were totes, oh okay, here we go. Uh, I can't, I'm gonna have to hold four and then the other one. Um, so these were slightly, oh, they're not coming up too badly. They were, these were slightly influenced by Faye and some um, yarn that she got from Ribbon, it's from Becky, uh, for some sock patterns that she's developing. Um, but there was a color palette that she had all the blues, all the blues, and then one mini of mustard and I went oh that's beautiful so these are really itchy I love how they're wound look they look like little coconuts <laughs> um they're gonna have to be like homeware so baskets rug I'm thinking a rug my little girl needs a needs a, um, a rug in her room and I was making her a super chunky super super chunky like 20 millimeters six strands of DK a la um Lindsay from Lottie and Albert blanket um a rainbow blanket but I was making a circular one and it's not quite working so I'm going I have actually frogged that back um but I'm thinking maybe or maybe I'll just make stuff for me like little baskets I don't know anyway da -da -da. and then I went and how cool is that little card <laughs> bunnies so this is big wigs angora uh, you're totally not going to see that. Oh, there we go. Uh, Big Wigs Angora, um, lovely lady who had these little, no, I can't remember what she called them, but they are 10 grams of Angora yarn from Big Wigs Angora. Now, they are a uh, 2575 Merino Angora blend. Yeah, 25% Angora and 75% Merino. Um, and I got C and Shell. C Shell. Now, Shell is not, Shell is much pinker than coming up on, on the camera and, and C is coming up far greater than it actually is, but there's blue in there. So these are really beautiful. I've got 20 grams of them. I have no idea what I'm gonna make with them, but they were beautiful, so I bought them. Can you spot a trend? And then <laughs> lastly, I, we went and spent a lot of time on the John Arban stand. I didn't buy anything from the John Arban, Arban stand, mainly because I'd kind of run out of money by that point. But then Flick mentioned to me that uh, she's hashtag, oh no, she's at Flick Marison on Instagram. Yes. Um, she mentioned to me uh, that John from Easy Knits was over the other side and he had his Christmas jumper. Now, for those of you who've watched Kirsty's Handmade Christmas from last last Christmas, the Christmas just gone, there was a Christmas jumper competition and John um, made, I think his name's John, uh, he made a Christmas jumper that was like neon colours with just beautiful, um, oh it's just beautiful, I'll see if I can pop a picture in of, the, of his jumper, but he had it there which was awesome, um, and we all took pictures of it. But I also then bought some minis from him, so because he has some really vibrant colours, <gasps> they actually are showing up quite nicely. So the blue is B O I or bigger on the inside because it's TARDIS blue, and then the green is called Petrol Head. Isn't that just so vibrant and just it's kind of got an iridescent quality to it? It's beautiful. I'm quite I'm filming in quite bright but late afternoon light. So everything's a bit washed out, but there you go. Right, that is what I bought. Most of them don't have purposes. <laughs> they're just gonna be, they're just gonna stay wound up and pretty until I can decide what I want to do. I'm, I'm thinking these will go in a sock and probably be contrasting. I have got some beautiful, I've redone my, um, as I said, my craft room and I've put all my beautiful yarns my sock yarns anyway, um, away, but I've got a skein, a hundred gram skein from Vicky Brown, which I think will actually go really well. It's called Storm Clouds and Rainbows, and I think actually this will be a really good contrasting heel, toes and cuffs. Anyway, we'll see what happens with that. These are basically, I can, I can hook them up as a reward for getting stuff done. So, one of the reasons for starting this and, and making sure that I'm accountable is I'm about to start taking part in the Marching Forward WAL Whip Along 18. So hashtag Marching Forward WAL 18, which um, Gosling and Plum and Love Charlie and lots of other people are um, hosting for March, where basically it's to try and get some of your whips actually finished off, um, or to at least 
get going on some of them. Uh, one of my issues is I'm a bit like squirrel. <laughs> I'm a bit squirrel. I I see a new cal or I see a new design and I see loads of people jumping on that bandwagon and I go, I want to do that. And then I forget that I've got so many different projects. So that is not happening. I am not allowed to start anything else until I have finished at least, I'm saying four, four. Oh, and the sun's come out, look at that. Oh well, um, four projects. That's my, yes. So I have split these projects into five, let's write this down, one, two, three, yes, five categories. There's the, the, the projects that I am planning on working on and making sure I get at least a fair chunk done during the whip along. I've then got the, they're literally almost finished, why are they not finished yet category, of which there's, there's five in that category. Uh, there's the, what's that one? I, repurpose, I can't read my hand handwriting. I've got my notebook. If anyone wants to know, this is a Rotterfaden, uh, oh, Taschen, uh, Rotterfaden, um, A6 cover and it's got three notebooks in it and the back notebook is basically what I planned for this on. So, stationery. Um, so the repurpose category, which has got three things in it. So things that I've started making that I'm not going to finish making or I frogged back to make into something else. Then there's the blankets category. Yeah, there's quite a lot in there. And then there's the everything else. So I'm going to start with the what I'm going to do in the whip along. So the whip along, I have three things that I need to finish or not finish, but at least make some decent progress on. One needs to be finished because, well, I'll show you. Number one is, and it's over here, uh, is whee, my. Now this hat has its own hashtag. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I lost my grandmother in August last year. Um, and my grandmother was the first person to introduce me to anything yarn. She knitted, she crocheted, um, she sewed, she made me the most beautiful quilt, which might just is, is what we snuggle under when we're watching the TV. Um, and I miss her a lot. Uh, but what I wanted to do last year in memory of my grandmother and to raise money for um, the Alzheimer's Society because she was taken from us by dementia. Um, and then also the Smallwood Trust, which was her chosen charity in her will, uh, was to make a blanket. Now, this is called, the hashtag is, and I'll put it down here, Granny E's Frugal Sunburst Blanket. So it's Sunburst Granny Squares. Um, I've made most of these, but some awesome, awesome friends of mine from Instagram and also from real life uh, have contributed some squares as well. So I haven't quite worked out how we're going to uh, raise the money for this because there's some legal stuff about raffling online, but I love it already. I've started the join. All the squares are done. It's going to be a black lap blanket. I just need to start the join. So I've been squaring it off. This is about, and I've got some ones added to the size and then I've got to add to the length. So that one I'm also going to be entering into the Zines and Roger Granny Cow. Uh, again, I'll put all the details below and her blog post explaining it, but that closes on the on the 15th of March. So I want to get this done and in for that. And anything I do win, I'll raffle off as well and raise some more money for um, getting rid of that hideous disease. Um, we lost her far earlier than last year. Um, and yeah. No one else needs to have it, it's horrible. So that's number one. <laughs> I'm 18. <laughs> number two is a blanket that I promised my father for his 60th birthday. My father turned 60 on the 13th of January this year. And it's not done yet. It's not even halfway finished. So I'll show you. Uh, oh, it's in a basket down here. So I have a beautiful basket. And the basket includes squares for 
the Ross blanket. Now the Ross blanket is a was a Starcraft cr crochet along uh, last year, year before, and I started it. I actually won the yarn pack from Starcraft in a competition. So I've done it in the, in the true colours because I've got the yarn for it. Um, and I am halfway through square four. So there are seven sections to this blanket. It is going to be massive. I'll insert, I'll insert a picture of the um, of what it should look like when it's finished. Um, so there's some small squares which are made into four big squares. So there's 16 of the small squares made into four big squares. There are there's a four second part is four squares of those kind of size that I just showed you. Part three is what I just showed you. Part four is this one which will be the same size and there's eight of those and eight of the part three and then Part five is some long rectangles to go on the sides, and then part six is a big square in the middle. And part seven is joining. <laughs> so I'm halfway port through point four. So that, once the sunburst blanket is done, and it should be done in the next couple of days. So it might actually not even make the whip along because if I can get it finished by the 28th of February, then it actually won't be in the whip along at all. Um, but this is the next one to be finished. Um, so that's that. Now, I cannot, I can't have one project at a time. I can't be monogamous. I get really bored. So the other thing that's going in on the whip along is a hat for my mother for Mother's Day. I'll post a, a link to what it is going to be, but it's the 1920s cloche hat by Hopeful Honey. Yes, Hopeful Honey. Um, so I've started it. My mum loves blues and greens and purples, and this is really not showing well. There we go. Uh, it's a lot greener than it's showing up on camera. Um, so I've wound up a ball of, uh, it's three strands of DK. This is the King Cole Merino blend um, DK, held together because it is a chunky yarn hat. So I've wound some strands, and you can see that there's some purple wound in there as well. Uh, this is all oddments that I've got from making some gloves and some mitts for my brother and his girlfriend for Christmas. So um, we've wound, so there's some pink in there as well. Oh, there's a the green as well. Let's not unravel. So there's purple and green and pink in there as well. So it's gonna be a real mishmash mish, mish, hat, but she saw the cloche hat because I made another Hopeful Honey um, hat for my grandmother, um, my French grandmother. I have one grandmother left now, my French one. Um, I made a hopeful honey hat for my for my grandmother, which was like a little newsboy peaked hat, which she loves. Um, and my mum went, okay, is there any others that are made like that? And I showed her hopeful honey, honey's website, and there's this 1920s cloche. Um, so I'm making that hat, but that I can interchange with the blanket, the Ross blanket, because then I won't get bored. And I think that's what I'll do is if I finish the hat, then I'll have another small project that I'll do alongside the blanket. So those are the three that I'm going to be working on in March for the whip along. Next ones are the why the hell aren't they finished yet? So there is the, not those ones. Um, so this is a pattern called Hexagons Are My Stars. It is a Christmas decoration. I made it in DK, acrylic, blue and white. It's missing just two points. It's not going to take me that long. And yet it has remained unfinished for about two and a half years. That's quite cute actually, I should have put a hat on it, a, a head on it and it would be... Anyway, it needs to be finished. So, that's that. One. There is then a hat that I started for, Amelia, for Amelia, who's my little girl. Um, she's she's now almost two, this is never gonna fit her again, so it's gonna have to go, go to someone else, but it is the lamb hat. Can you see what's missing? It needs ears. The ears are made. All I need to do is put the ears on the hat, but I haven't. Now the question is, do I make it and sell it when I do my Christmas? Look at the little pom-poms on the end. They're so cute, they're so being washed out in this lot. Do I make it and finish it and sell it? Maybe sell it. Or do I frog it? and use the yarn for something else. Because it's not, it's not gonna be worn by my child. Her head's too big. So I don't know. 
answers below. Give me your opinions. So there's that one. That's number, oh, where are we? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five of 18. There's then this, which is a jumper that was knitted for me, I think by my mother when I was tiny. Now it is of a size that will fit my little girl, but it needs, it needs fastenings. So literally all that I need to do is add some poppers. And that'll be a nice little slouchy jumper that can go on over a long sleeve vest and some leggings and it'll actually look quite nice. It needs, it needs massive debobbling. <laughs> but why the hell is it not finished yet? I'm just throwing everything on the floor. This was supposed to be a wedding present for my lovely friend Rich and his new wife Pinar when they got married last July. July 2017, it's now February 2018, at the end of February 2018. Um, there's a wheel and some handlebars. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's a, that's a seat. There's another wheel. It's supposed to be a motorbike with two hearts coming out of it. It's just bits. It needs sewing together. That's all, that's all it needs. It needs sewing together. Why is it not done yet? And then, have I got everything? Oh, and then my last of my why is this not done yet? This one needs slightly more work than the others. So I have, oh, I can't remember what yarn this is. This is cotton, Aran, and the yarn is, anyway, I'll put it down below. But I've got two E's. You can't really see that they're E's because they're a bit floppy, but there you go. I've got th two E's, which I want to make 3D so that I can put some beans at the bottom of them and they can sit and be a doorstop for her bedroom door. But all I need to do is do the outside, stuff it, put some beans in it. Oh, that's probably a bit of a longer project. To be honest, that's probably going to be the next thing I do once I finish the cloche hat. But again, this, as I said, she's almost two. I started this when she was month, two. So yeah, this is over 18 months old. Why is that not finished? Okay, those are those ones. We now move on to repurposing. So I have this one, which is in a birch box bag. This one. This one. They're all in. Oh, I might turn you. Oh, I don't know if I can, I can turn you. They're all in. I have a Calax unit here, which has got some of my yarn, but my DK is, at, is behind my shoulder. Everything else, there we go. There we go. Um, but one whole bit is pretty much whips. whips. So I have uh, my daughter's, oh, this is all for me, uh, my daughter's bedroom, I'm putting these on the floor, um, is themed bunnies, butterflies, and birds. So I started making her some of these little bunny motifs. Oh, totally washed out. There we go. Um, that I had planned, look at his little love ears. Um, I had planned to, or I had actually, I put them all on a chain. So I chained and then added and then chained and then added. I think it, there was like 10 chains between each one to put them up as a little bunny garland on her, on her wall. Now what I've got on her wall at the moment is the flower garland that was in a little box of crochet ages ago. Um, that was designed by Alia of the Little Bee New Zealand. NZ, the little b NZ. Um, so I didn't really want to take that garland down because I think it, it, it it's lovely on her wall. So I did it and then I blocked them and they're still a bit, but can you see that even though they're blocked, it's acrylic so it doesn't, unless you, unless you steam it and kill the acrylic basically, it won't, it doesn't tend to hold its shape for tiny things like that. So what I think I'm going to do is it may, I'm either going to do a cushion cover for with like solid grannies or a little blanket. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 in six different colors. So I've got pink, oh, wait for the camera to catch up. Pink, yellow, orange, blue, purple, and this kind of light green. So that's my colours. So I've got 12. 
which would be a three by four blanket, potentially, of granny squares and just put them right in the middle. Or if I do a, if I do a cushion, it's gonna have to be a rectangular cushion if I wanna use all the bunnies. Yeah, so I don't know what to do with them, but they need to be repurposed, but they're there. I don't wanna frock them because they're cute. And I wanna use them as well for some reason, but I don't know what to use them for. Anyway, there's then the tart grannies. Can you spot a thing? I have these, what are they? They're shoe boxes, I think, from the Clear Box Company. They're shoe boxes, and they've got little handles, which I quite like. Um, now, can you see in there, apart from the glare? I've got a lot of chunky yarn. Okay. Now, these were a three by four granny blanket, but they were, it was a tiny granny blanket. Um, and they're just oddments of chunky yarn. There's some mostly acrylic, but there's some wool blends in there. Um, some with super chunky yarn as well. And they were made into a blanket and they're lovely. There's some that have felted a bit because they went through the wash. But actually the blanket is way too small for, a, for my little girl now. And actually it's not being used. So I frogged the blanket, took the, salvaged the squares from the blanket. And I'm gonna make it into a cushion cover. So I, there were a couple of squares that really had seen better days, they completely felted. Um, so, they're going into a cushion. So there's gonna be four on one side and four on the other, and they're gonna go into a cushion. So I've got all the chunky yarn left over, mostly aqua, oh, what color is it? It's Starcraft, Aster, Aspen. Aspen, Starcraft Aspen. There's also some cream as well. Um, so I'm going to make them into a granny square cushion. And if, ooh, I, if I get this done before the 15th, I could totally put this in for the zines and Roger Cal, granny Cal. Ooh, okay, dad's blanket might need to take a back seat if I want to do that. Okay, that's that. Uh, all this stuff is on my desk now. Okay, never mind. Last one, which is the repurposing is, uh, another Starcraft cowl. So Starcraft, and I cannot remember who the designer of this was, they did a crochet along for a blanket called the Carousel. And I'm going to hold it up and hopefully you can see it. Now, it's a round blanket and it's supposed to represent the big top. And so you've got the middle bit, you've got the stripes on the outside, you've then got the pentagons, and then there's hexagons to go on the outside. Now I started doing this when my little girl was very, very small, and it was something that I could do while she was sleeping. Um, so, but the hexagons took forever. And I, no, pentagons took forever, and I really don't want to do the hexagons. So I'm thinking, ooh, that's quite cool. No, I'm thinking I might repurpose it as like a giant floor cushion. So I get some nice kind of sturdy fabric and somehow fashion it into a floor cushion. I don't know. Oh, I'm showing you, I'm showing you the back. Huh, that's, am I showing you the back? I am showing you the back. There we go. So I don't know about this one, but I don't want to finish it. It's not lying flat anyway, and I'm, look, it kind of, it's already got a curve in it, so it's not lying flat, it's not going to be a decent blanket, so, hmm, hmm, it's got one of my favourite stitch markers just sat on there, that's a little, that is actually the one from the Alia, from the Little Bee, Little Box of Crochet, <laughs> so that's that one. So there's, yeah, there's three repurposes, two of which I don't really know what I'm doing with, but I don't want to frog them. There was so much work that went into that carousel cow. Okay, blankets. So this one has been sat here for ages. This is a hexagon blanket that's, uh, the pattern is uh, Sandra Cherry Heart. It's her weekender blanket. And I started it in 2015. Yeah, 2015? Yes, 2015 as my square a day blanket. There are definitely not 365 hexagons on this. So 
that's been sat there and not been done. Um, so I need to work out what I want to do with it, whether I want to, I don't particularly want to unpick it, it's really long. So I could always, I really don't know, <laughs> I really don't know what I do with it. Um, yeah. Hmm, answers on a postcard. It says that one. My octagons. When my husband and I went on a really, really long trip, 2014, to America, we went to America for a month, and we basically went from one side to the other. And while I was there, I was just learning to crochet. I'd been crocheting for about six months, so I decided that I was going to make lots of motifs that I could do on the planes in between different places. So I made lots of octagons. Now, this some of this was yarn that I bought in the UK and took with me, and some of this was yarn, yarn that I bought in the US. Um, so octagons don't go together nicely in a blanket because there's holes in between. So what I've been doing is I've been putting black granny squares in between and seaming them with a double crochet join. Now I like double crochet joins at the front, so I like that ridge and I think it looks a bit like stained glass. But yeah, so I'm slowly, when I have time, adding ones on but not very fast and there's this whole Oh, I'm losing squares. I've got a whole basket full of octagons. So, there's that one. <laughs> you should sit down there, it's awful. Okay, then I've got my Sophie. So, Sophie's Universe was everywhere for a while. I decided to make the stonewashed XL version and I chose my own colours. And my own colours were these. Now, let's see how we do. I'm going to sit back a bit. This is my Sophie. I think I'm on round. Mm -hmm. I think I'm on round sixty-two. So I'm still a long way away from finishing, and it hasn't been touched. It's in this giant bag. It hasn't been touched for about a year and a half. Yeah. I want to buy the book. So she she put the pattern in a book, and it's now being sold on Wool Warehouse, I think. So I want to buy the book and then kind of work my way through it in print. Um, but it's in this bag which says, fill me with loveliness. Got the advent calendar, the yarn advent calendar from Vicky Brown uh, this year. And it was worth every penny. It was so good. And the yarn, I love Vicky Brown. The, the, her colours are just beautiful. Uh, so I got 23 10 gram mini skeins and then Christmas Eve was a 20 gram mini skein. And they're all her kind of, they weren't all Christmas yarns, there were some that were Christmas yarns, there were some that had normal colourways. Uh, so what I decided to do with those is make each 10 gram mini made two six round hexagons. So this is her Hendrick colourway, which is not going to show up at all. Um, this is her Hendrick colourway and it makes, yes, yeah, so, so using Sandra at Cherry Hearts um, hexagon pattern, but just adding more, more rounds onto it. So I'm going to have, once I've done all um, mini skeins into hexagons I'm going to have 50 hexagons. Now that's not big enough in this size to make a decent sized blanket so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to order some probably drops and nords. So um, I'm going to do a row of cream, a row of alternating so colour, cream, colour, cream, a row of cream, colour, cream, colour, cream and that should make me a decent sized like single bed throw but it's going to take a while because I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine of these done so that's going to be a slow burn blanket but I'm determined to get that finished by the end of this year because then I can get another yarn advent calendar and do something else with that that's my blankets so there's one two four blankets that are in the blankets category not the I'm going to finish this in March category so actually I've got six blankets on the go Seven if you include the bunnies if I do a blanket. Yeah. Seven blankets. Right, we are, we've got to 15 of 18, so when we're, we're on the home stretch. The little box of crochet box, which has got the Bohemian Dream slippers. They're not showing very well. Ooh, there we go. It's not going to focus, is it? Not going to focus. Nope, okay. Um, so I've got that far on slipper one. So I'll do them at some point. So that's those ones. 
And then I have in this beautiful bag, which I think was Birchbox again, is my Picking Flowers sweater. I'll insert that picture, I'll put the things below. But this is a Rosie's Moment yarn that I bought at Yarndale. This is the Picking Flowers sweater, and this is how far I've got with it. Look at the motifs on the side, aren't they? Isn't that just a beautiful yarn? So, that I'm, I'm, sa I'm saving. I'm saving to uh, Faye at the Crochet Circle podcast is going to be doing a summer tops cowl, and I'm going to finish it then. So that's my Picking Flowers sweater. And I've been talking for almost an hour. And then last but by no means least is my pom pom Christmas tree. You can see how what I need to do. So I've got two more pom poms, but I need to actually spend the time to making the pom poms and making pom poms actually takes a while. I have got a multi pom now. It's just basically a wire frame that you can wrap your yarn and wrap your yarn and wrap your yarn and then you can make like up to 20 pom poms at a time. It's quite cool. Those are my 18. That's a lot. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this all down in the show notes. I might even put it on my blog actually as the show notes. Next time I'm going to think about, well I'm going to think about my reward for now and then I'll probably tell you what my reward is for doing stuff in the whip along next time. I've also got something coming from Vicky Brown which I'm very excited about uh, which I'll show you next time and hopefully I'll have a finished object or two to show you but thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.